Nissan RTX for 2025. Today, we are here at the stall of Skipper Intelligence. Skipper is one of the industry leaders who represents Indian brand in global market. We have leadership team of Skipper India Limited, Mr. Kaushi Groy and Ms. Sudarshana Dutt Yeah, so uh, this has been, I think, the fifth year we are participating in Middle East Energy. We are quite consistent and this is one of the very growing market for Skipper Limited. Last year, we were quite unfortunate with the uncalled for situations, but we are very happy to be here this year. And we are seeing quite a positive response in terms of, in terms of interactions we are having from the customers, from the visitors, and we are uh, quite positive and looking very confident with this market. I would like to ask you about the kind of uh, innovations that you are bringing up in this market because the market today we see is very dynamic and it is transforming, energy sector is transforming. How do you cope up with that? See, uh, there are a lot of innovations which are going on for the transmission and distribution industry. Currently, we are doing a lot of research uh, in terms of uh, building a lot of small footprint towers, uh, which we are developing with, with the help of a lot of clients and a lot of inputs from the EPC companies. At the same time, uh, we are having one research and development center uh, in the premises of uh, Skipper where we are basically having a lot uh, more of uh, uh, technology driven things we are doing in terms of uh, testing of the towers. So the kind of results that we are getting by doing these innovations year over year after year, the kind of results are unmatched to our competitor where we can see there is a significant difference between Skipper and rest of the manufacturer that are there in the car market. Skipper has, you know, evolved itself from a manufacturer to an engineering solution provider right now. So it's not that Skipper only manufactures what uh, it's required. It's provided complete uh, compact solutions so that we can add value in terms of optimization. The optimization is not in terms of cost also, but in terms of efficiency. So since we have the strength of operating with uh, more than 200 plus EPCs now worldwide and who are and the direct utilities also from across globe starting from Canada, US, Middle East, Latin, Australia and all. So we understand the requirement too very well and our R&D centers are quite equipped with our well-versed designers and engineers to understand the product demands, the market demands, the current demands and provide solutions accordingly. So we would like to term ourselves or position ourselves as an engineering solution provider rather than a manufacturer. So an Indian company, when it comes to a global scenario, you face, you must be facing a lot of technical as well as compliance challenges. Can you give some, throw some light to, you know, what kind of challenges you deal and how do you successfully manage that? See, uh, there are a uh, lot of different aspects into it to look at. Uh, the first thing that we do is we collaborate with most of the EPC companies as we are working more than 200 EPCs currently and the different requirements, the different terrain requires uh, uh, cutting edge solutions. At the same time, it is custom made. The product that we are doing, it's highly engineered and it's custom made. So our design team is quite conversant and quite adaptable to these uh, different requirements. So we come up with all these uh, solutions to you know match the requirements of the client worldwide and be it uh, different kind of a tower be it the shortest delivery lead time we match with uh, the requirement and we come up with the solutions so it's more of our homogenated product we can operate on different steel grades which add value uh, to our deliveries what kind of innovations uh, helps you to expand into RE integration market. See, RE integration market is something which is uh, coming up in a big way as we see it. We see a lot of uh, business out there because it's more of an IPP, uh, it's independent power producers that are quite different from the conventional utility. And we face this kind of a new challenges uh, and we evolve ourselves to meet all this uh, challenges and so that we can come up with the uh, solutions with the value addition to the clients. 
you know, the renewable energy evacuations are just shortest gestation period. With our kind of for the backward integrated uh, company, what uh, how we add value is basically reducing the lead time. So this is where the success factor lies when we talk about renewable energy. You mentioned about your R and D center and uh, how successful it is. Uh, it is considered as one of the largest globally. Yes. Uh, your testing facility at yes. West Bengal. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, share some more uh, details about that facility and how it is encouraging Indian market to move to the next level? See, the R&D facility that we have is a, is a world-class level. Uh, so, uh, we can test up till 120 meter high tower, which is unmatched, unparalleled. And uh, the, we always use this elliptical winches, which gives us uh, beautiful data to uh, check with the requirements of the client. So, the clients are very happy with the test bed that we have. And uh, this kind of a, a, a solution is not available to all the players in the market. So a lot of our competitors, they have come to us to grab this opportunity to, you know, uh, add value to their solutions as well. So we uh, basically, you know, take pride in having this kind of uh, world-class solutions. And at the same time, we are adding up one more facility to it just to match the global surge in demands. For this kind of testing so you are going to uh, build a new facility added to that or expanding the capacity of existing facility we are adding up one more facility and in the same premises so we can test maybe double the quantity of towers that we are doing right now and what kind of investment do you expect to uh, plug into that somewhere around uh, uh, twice the revenue in coming maybe two to three years of timeline that is what we see from the market. Are you considering any kind of uh, technology integration to your solutions? Yes, so digitalization and automation is one of our key focus and which is a part of our investments which uh, we are targeting for doubling up of our with the capacities, the enhancement of our efficiencies with the kind of revenues which we are forecasting in the next three to five years. So here definitely automations and digitalization plays is playing a greater part and as you know that working in this domain for the last 43 years has already given Skipper an immense data in uh, capturing uh, strength uh, while working with nearly 50-55 uh, countries and so many clients. So we are a data power bank itself in terms of what exactly the customer wants and how much we can deliver and at what extent and we are also giving it a, a, a edge over with definitely with our increasing our efficiency building on the efficiency level which may be in terms of uh, setting up of another galvanizing plant uh, second test beds and more investing on our designs uh, having more on pre-qualification platforms to reduce on the lead times to deliver more on the international fronts so these are the some of the strategies or some of the you know the things which we have initiatives we had already taken it which is a past pa part of our revenue jumping up vision uh, along with uh, uh, energy transition trends what's happening how are you planning to uh, leverage that especially in battery storage systems as well as uh, esv uh, substations we are already into manufacturing of structures, grids and all. We are already in this domain of manufacturing. So when we are talking, we are talking about uh, small, uh, having uh, substations, having a best and all. So it is just a diversification or an expansion of what we are already doing. So we are quite confident on that part and it's, it's a company's, you know, you know, kind of a near vision to have its diversifications in what the world demands right now. Uh, what kind of solutions will be ideal for Indian subcontinent uh, for reducing power wastage and enhancing quality of power supply, uh, especially from the TND perspective? See, so currently TND, uh, we are into the mostly into the transmission line of it. So we are expanding ourselves horizontally to, you know, grab the business for the substations as well. So we have just started into it. Uh, we are looking into the aspects of it, which can, uh, you know, reduce this uh, energy loss and the kind of uh, efficiency that 
uh, customers are looking for. So to match that, yes, we are, we are coming across a lot of solutions which are coming up recently. A lot of global solutions uh, with the help of AI and a lot of new technologies are coming into the market. So yes, we are tapping into those areas as well to you know uh, grow our business in that sector. And energy storage is one of the prime key towards that because when we talk about energy wastages and uh, uh, having the energy transmitted in the microseconds as much microsecond possible so that there is always a backup ready in terms of any crisis and all. So energy storage is uh, the prime focus you know for, for our, this kind of uh, developing nations or developing continents. When there is a growth of renewable energies, wind energy, solar and power, there is an equal and high demand growth of their evacuations. So when we talk about evacuation, then TND sectors comes in place. So the more we will be talking about uh, uh, different sources of energies, the more we will be talking about their evacuations and consumption. Is there any specific shift in demand from utilities or from substations uh, in terms of tower building or kind of material that get used? See, all the projects currently are having a very limited timeline to match. So, all the customers that we are meeting and the end clients, they are asking to meet the, uh, the project in the specific timeline. To meet all the demands so that because the power generation is starting up and if you don't build the transmission and distribution, you won't be able to supply it to the customers. So, yes, the timeline is the biggest factor that we see currently. And that is why Skipper comes into the play because we are backwardly integrated as well as horizontally, uh, you know, expanded ourselves to match all these demands from in-house supplies. And yes, we are the one-stop solution from all the customers so that we can meet the timeline. Yeah. So being future ready or being market ready is being the key. Do you see any uh, new material comes into uh, play, like lightweight material? or uh, material which gives a uh, longer life than what we are currently using. Currently what we are seeing a transition from uh, towers to ports. Skipper is, is I think one of the first companies uh, to supply uh, the ports in the United States. Maybe uh, this are the different kinds of diversifications we are already putting in place where um, the, 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 the developed or the developed countries, what their demands are, the skipper is already set up with the public infrastructures and this is in place to get the record. So we see uh, quite demands or transitions from towns to ports kind of things. And about I think the uh, grades of product quality, we are already working in all possible grades. As I mentioned just previous uh, some time back, we are more into a uh, homogeneous product delivery than uh, Skipper is aiming high with their new facility for testing. They are aiming for doubling their turnover in the next three to four years. So let us watch out. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so you much, much for interacting with EPR Magazine.